Uh, welcome back everyone uh, to another episode of our Patient Spotlight series. Today we're happy to have Emily joining us. Welcome Emily. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, so Emily, you uh, are an osteointegration patient, so we're really happy to have you here to learn about your journey and your experience. So if you don't mind, please start by telling myself and the viewers a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name's Emily, I'm 31. Uh, currently living in Adelaide, so I've just finished my doctorate in parasport classification, uh, hoping very much to get back up to the University of Queensland, do some teaching, find a job up there, um, hopefully in the field, if not just whatever's gone. Um, at the moment, living in Adelaide, um, just because there's family in Adelaide, so just working in a desk job, unfortunately. So when We'll get to this later, but I developed CRPS at the point that I'd finished my PhD. I wasn't able to engage in those activities anymore, so I did have to take a desk job as a temporary thing. And now that I've had the leg off, I can just start searching for jobs again. It's great. <laughs> well, first of all, congratulations on completing your doctorate. That's an incredible achievement. Uh, Emily, could you s perhaps tell us what circumstances led to, I guess, injury to your leg and ultimately the loss of your leg? So I've had knee problems since I was 15. Um, so I was diagnosed with osteochondritis dissecans. 15 years ago, you type that in on Google and nothing. There was just no information about it. It was, to me, it was relatively unknown. Whereas today you've got Google and you can find pretty much whatever you want. Um, so I got diagnosed with that at 15 years old. So had multiple scopes, multiple microfractures, and it just kept coming back. I did have some good times in there. I ran the London Marathon after a microfracture because I got a good recovery. Um, triathlons, water polo, pretty much everything you can think of. I did uh, Olympic weightlifting as well when the knee started to wear out a little bit. I was pretty good at that and then it just continued to get worse. So we just transferred to upper body. Um, I skipped every leg day, so to speak. Um, so I had, uh, uh, a high tibial osteotomy to realign my leg in 2018 with a cadaver donation uh, for the bone and the cartilage for the bottom of the femur. Um, so I had that done in 2018, had a great recovery, got back to my rock climbing, my hiking, was living my best life. Uh, unfortunately, the graft started to become uh, shrinking inside of the hole that they'd made for it. So I started to get catching and locking again. So we were planning to do either a total knee replacement or uh, we were looking at more bio-regeneration stuff, but we were sort of at the end of the line there for the knee. Um, I unfortunately then went and had an argument with a wet floor. So I slipped on a wet floor and developed CRPS. Uh, so it's complex regional pain syndrome. Um, so it's the most painful condition known to mankind at the moment. That's where it's hung to. Yeah, it's so pretty much the top of the so, 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 and that's one? Yep. In. Yeah. And here? Yeah. Now? Okay, we're easing off. Here. And now I've got normal sensation there. Um, there is no cure. People talk about putting that into remission. We don't talk of it in terms of a cure. Um, so it's typically characterized by color and temperature changes in the limb, nail, skin, hair growth changes, um, a massive amount of pain, so more pain. Uh, then is sort of in line with the original injury and it also lasts a lot longer. Uh, you become very sensitive to certain things. So for me, I was sensitive to water, I was sensitive to wind, pressure, you name it, I was probably sensitive to it. So um, I started using a wheelchair at that time just to try and kind of get around. Um, but ultimately I couldn't shower. So I was showering once a week as an absolute necessity and that would send you into a pain flare. Um, when I realized it wasn't going anywhere. So this started all in my foot and gradually worked its way up the leg. So we got to kind of just below the knee, maybe mid tibia, something like that. And I started looking at options, alternative options for treatments. And I remembered that osseo integration was a thing. And I knew one girl in Adelaide who'd had her leg amputated for CRPS under Munjid about four or five years ago. I played basketball with her wheelchair basketball, so we kind of got talking. I was already aware that it was a thing, but she's had such a great outcome and I was thinking, mine's not stopping the spread. I can't have this spreading to the rest of my body. I just need to do something. And if it jumped or spread after surgery, at least I would know that I'd done everything. But thankfully, 
everything's looking super healthy and Munjid gave me the best news ever. He said, your CRPS is gone. So every week that goes by, we kind of all relax a little bit more. Absolutely. So, well, that's wonderful. Yeah. And you kind of touched on a few things I wanted to ask you, Emily. Um, so at what point, you know, you've had all these procedures uh, and unfortunately they don't seem to be working over a long period of time. At what point did you start thinking, you know, this isn't working. I need another solution. It wasn't until the CRPS that I really seriously considered it. So I was given a few options. They said, we can try and put your CRPS into remission. However, if we do that, the knee surgery you need to fix that knee defect is probably going to trigger it again. So I said, well, what's the point in doing that and still having CRPS? It's just not what anyone wants. Some people are very lucky and they manage to get it to a point where it's manageable, but I had a severely dystonic foot. I couldn't put any weight through it. It wasn't anatomically able to put any weight on it. It was kind of completely curled over. The x-ray was, I think, the most shocking thing for me on the day that I came in because you can kind of fluff over it when it's just kind of there. But when you see it on an x-ray, you think, oof, that's not healthy. That's not good. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the point that I got to. I said, I got told that with the CRPS, they said, you will never walk on that limb ever again. They said, you're going to be reliant on something for the rest of your life. And I said, you know what? No. I said, I want to go rock climbing. I want to go hiking. I would like to walk on the beach again, just simple things like that. And this was pretty much the only thing that was going to give that back to me. Yeah. So I didn't see it as getting rid of my leg. I saw it as getting my life back. So Absolutely. Yeah. So you heard about osteointegration through your colleague and you came down to Sydney to see Professor Almodaris, and then what happened? So I was actually made aware of this in 2017. I was working at a gym in England. Um, there was a military vet there, bilateral above knee, and he had osteo done at Birmingham when Munjid was over there. And I remember him coming back and I was like, that's really cool. What's going on here? And he started telling me about it. I thought it was amazingly cool. So I did a little bit more reading into it, but I never thought I'd be a patient. I was like, I'll oh, just, I'm just interested to have a look at this. Um, then I read Munjid's books a few years later. Um, and then, so when this happened, I said, there's no one else, particularly in Australia, will touch you as a CRPS patient. He's pretty much, you know, the guy to come to with that condition. People just don't want to touch you. They're naturally quite scared of a condition like that where it can go and spread around and wreak havoc. So when I came up here, I came for the eight hours uh, didn't really know what to expect from the day. There was, it's weird seeing your, or hearing your history being read back to a room of people that you've only just met. Um, he told me I was great at hopping, so <laughs> a big thumbs up. Um, I think I was just grateful when I got here that A, I'd had a call back once I put the form in online and they said, well, there's probably something we can do for you. So come up for the day and I'm thinking, okay, that's, that's a good sign. I've been knocked back straight away. Uh, he was probably one of the first doctors I've been to outside of pain specialist who actually just got CRPS. So one of the things that stuck with me was when I got asked to rate my pain out of 10 and I said, I don't really know how. And he said, yeah, I understand. That's just amazing. It's very nice as a chronic pain patient to have someone that says, yeah, that's fine. A lot of people just continue to push you for a number out of 10 and I think, if you don't know what zero is, how could you possibly rate this on a scale of zero to 10? So that was, I think, one of the first things that I said, yep, this is the guy to come to for this. Um, and then we went through all the other little bits and pieces. And then I had a little nervous wait in this in this office whilst I waited for him to come back in. And he said, yep, we think you're a good candidate. Everyone's happy with you. And then I was being sort of pushed out over there to go and book in a day for surgery, which was two months later. And I was thinking, okay, this is good. I'm pretty excited to get my life back. Yeah. <laughs> very, very excited to get my life back. Um, a little bit nervous, but excited, mostly excited. So that explains the high blood pressure. Feels weird to start with, but no, I felt very, I felt very um, sort of not justified. That's the wrong word sort of validated in my experience of CRPS and me thinking that getting an amputation was going to be the best way forwards because a lot of people would say, oh, well, it's still a... Some people refer to it as still a healthy limb, and I said, it's, it's not. It doesn't work. But for some people, the choice 
to amputate or leg seems quite extreme, but in a disease that's that extreme, I think, you know, you've just got to try everything. And it's pretty much last chance saloon with CRPS when you're coming to an ortho saying, I would like you to cut my leg off. So it was just, yeah, it was a good day overall. Like I was surprised, I think, at how understanding and how knowledgeable he was at CRPS, which seems ridiculous now looking back, but you know, you don't experience that very often as someone with that condition, so. What are we doing today? You're taking off my little blaster on the right. Okay, so are we doing an above knee amputation? Above the knee and then yep. you're gonna put a nice shiny rod in yep. and then you're gonna bury some of my nerves. Yes. And I'm gonna get my life back. Hope so, okay. So you had the surgery, could you explain or talk us through what did it feel like the first 24 or 48 hours after the surgery? How, how was life different? So when I came out into recovery, I just remembering to, asking someone to pull the, the covers back so I could check that it was actually gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, I then remember that I was just waving it around in recovery. So Mujid came and said, don't excite it too much, but I was just <laughs> excited to have even in the recovery room, I said, I can move this and it doesn't hurt. This is wild, this is great. I had absolutely no pain for the first sort of five to six days. Had a bit of phantom pain since then, but I had absolutely no pain the first five to six days. And I think this is something that if you haven't experienced chronic pain, you cannot appreciate the magnitude of that experience to come out of surgery and for the first time for, you know, who knows how long you are pain free. So the day after surgery, the only thing I was concerned about was doing chin-ups. So we're going to get 10 by the time I leave Sydney. So that'll be two months to get to 10. And the therapist might get involved. And the physios are getting involved as well. <laughs> it was wild. I've never felt that. I've been in, in and out of chronic pain states for 15 years. Very badly, I think, for the last sort of five years. So to come out and have no pain, usually you go into a surgery and you wake up and I guess some level of discomfort, but there was none of that. I was just sitting there happily eating my lemonade icy pole. <laughs> my victory icy pole, it was the best thing in the world. Yeah, there you go. Uh, And Emily, I know it's only been like about a month or two since you've had the procedure done, but even in that short amount of time, how would you say your life has changed as a result of having osseointegration surgery? So like I said before, with the CRPS, I was so water sensitive, wind sensitive. So I think the two days after the surgery. So on the Friday, I had my first shower over in the hospital and it didn't hurt. I didn't have to hang my limb out of the shower to stop it from getting wet. I was able to just sit there and have the water kind of run over me. I didn't need to protect anything. It was, it was amazing. It's an experience. I just sat in the shower and I thought, this is, how good is this? You know, something that most people would take for granted. I was sitting there thinking, this is the best thing in the world. Most people probably dread getting up out of bed after a surgery to go and do that for the first time. But I was pumped. I was like, let's do it. <laughs> Um, in terms of other things, I was out and about the other day and it was really, really windy and I just remember thinking that I could feel the wind on my skin and it didn't hurt. No problems. No problems. It was great. Um, I can have both legs under the bed covers at night and just sleep like everyone else would sleep. So before the surgery, I would hang it out the side of the bed to stop it from hitting anything. It was the safest way for me to sleep because I'd probably knock it in the night if I put it under the covers, wake myself up. But again, can just go to bed i don't have to think about it um the first time i stood up over there there was no rush of pain in a limb which is what i would normally get with crps so if i changed my postures i would get more swelling than i already had in it and it would just hurt like anything i stood up over there and i was thinking there's not this rush down the limb because it's gone so even in that first sort of month or so even before i had the leg like it's it's been life-changing. I'm able to do things that I wasn't able to do before. It just puts me back on a level playing field with everyone else so I can kind of just do life, get involved. Um, and now with the leg on, stood up for the first time and it was pain-free last Thursday. 
that was wild. So we had some tears on that day. <laughs> Yeah, this we like this. This is the best day. <laughs> oh, I had two shoes on and it didn't hurt. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Just wait till we start walking. <laughs> okay, this I'll is what I get with a stand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Think of the footage then. Okay, all done. We can all go home now. Oh, it was a great day, but even before the lake went on, there was so many just little things that I was just so grateful for every day that I was just able to do. I was able to take care of myself. Yeah, no doubt as you know, you continue walking more and more with your new leg, you're gonna be able to do more and more things. That's the goal, get back to hiking and rock climbing. So you've told us a little bit about some of the things you can do now that you couldn't do before. What has been the reaction of some of your friends and family as a result of having the surgery? What have you shared with them? Um, so I think everyone wanted to see the CRPS in person when I was sort of saying, I think I need to consult about an amputation. I don't think this is going anywhere. It's obviously quite a shocking conversation to be having with of course. a family member is getting rid of something that's been a part of them for their whole life. It's very different, I guess, to a traumatic amputation. Someone's coming to get the osseo done because they didn't get on with the socket. But for me, I was sitting there saying, I think I need to cut it off. And that's, that's the procedure that I want over a soccer. And so I made that as, I guess, an informed decision. I think it makes it maybe slightly easier. I was able to process that before it happened. I mean, that leg was dead to me long before it was cut off me in theater, so. Um, you kind of already mentally checked out from the leg. I'd mentally checked out from the leg completely. I was just very much excited to get it off and move on. So I feel like I'd already grieved the loss of the leg because to me it was already gone long before I got over there. And at that point, the leg was really just a hindrance to you and all the things you wanted to do. Like even in the videos pre-surgery, I was having to hold the knee up. It was just so uncomfortable getting wheeled down to theaters. I thought, I just can't hold this in a comfortable position. <laughs> so when they put, and when the anesthetist put the nerve block in, I was just thinking, oh my goodness. That's the last time I'm gonna feel that. And it's gone. And it felt great. I mean, even when they went to go and swing my legs up, I was just like, make sure it's, uh, she can't feel it. <laughs> um, but yeah, they've been very supportive. I think they can just see, I think one of the comments that was made was you got color back in your face. I think, I didn't really notice, but apparently I was quite pale and just sort of sickly looking beforehand. I said, it's probably what a dying limb will do for you, so. People have just said, you know, I'm much more mobile. I'm able to just kind of scoot around on my crutches. I was fully reliant on a wheelchair before. So I'm able to use my crutches more. I'm able to bend down and pick stuff up off the floor. Like it's just been so good. So I think they just see those changes in my life and they say, yeah, okay, this was, this was a good decision. Um, some of them friends say they don't understand the decision, but they support it. And I said, that's fine. I said, I don't expect you to understand it because your legs are perfectly healthy. You're not meant to understand it, but they've been very, very supportive. They've been very excited to get all the videos. Um, so I post surgery, I said, you sure I <laughs> thanks Siri. So you already mentioned hiking is one of your goals. What other goals are you looking forward to short term, long term? So I used to row in university. Um, since I got so water sensitive, I couldn't even think about going near the water. So I've been contacted by a kayaking coach in SA. So I said, yeah, we'll give it a crack. Give that a go. So take You're already up, being recruited. Take up kayaking. She said, there's no high performance sort of agenda here. And I said, no, no, we want to take this as far as we can go. I would love to get to a Paralympics. So we just got to kind of target my efforts somewhere accordingly because I'm over 30. So I've still got endurance. I said, I'm still good at that. <laughs> so we'll take We'll try kayaking. I said, we'll just try all different things, see what I'm good at and put my heart and soul into it. It'll be great to be able to sit in my basketball chair without having to fold the leg underneath the chair to protect it. I can just have it there and just kind of ready to go. It took me about 10 minutes to get myself into my chair. That's longer than any of the quads or the paras simply because I had was busy with tucking and protecting the leg. I said, it shouldn't take me longer, but it did, so that's gonna be easy now. Absolutely. Just yeah. hop in. And I think it's already clear to 
both myself and the viewers that you're an incredible athlete. The fact that you ran the London Marathon with micro fractures in your leg. I mean, I would struggle to run a marathon on the best day. So, oh, yeah, you're going to do great things. Well, when I got CRPS, so CRPS is not an eligible impairment type for the Paralympics because it's a pain disorder. Sure. I had to kind of seek out my own things to keep me sort of happy and motivated. So I decided I was going to push a half marathon in my day chair. Um, so pending verification at the moment, I did beat the world record for that. Wow, congratulations. In under two hours. So that was a month before the leg came off. So I was ticking off all of these milestones. <laughs> And then I came up here and I said, yeah, we're done. We're done. I've achieved everything I needed to with that. And now she's all yours. And now you're going to achieve even more. Yeah, with correct. Your new leg. I know, right? Emily, what advice would you offer to an amputee who is perhaps considering osteointegration surgery but isn't sure if it's right for them? What would you say to that person? So like we were talking about earlier when I was walking, I can feel the deformity in my shoe as I'm walking. I can feel the sort of the softness deforming as I walk along, I can feel the different ground types. So everyone talks about the osseoperception before you get it done, but you can't really fully appreciate it until you've got it and you're feeling all of these things. So I'm aware of where that leg is in space. Without looking at it, I can tell you where it is, whether it's behind, because it's obviously pulling on something that's directly interfacing with the skeleton so that's been pretty incredible i can't compare it to a socket but just from what i've heard is there's just not very much perception of those kinds of things so i've only been walking on it for a week but i'm already noticing those sorts of things as being positives um in terms of the other stuff with sockets i didn't want to deal with having to get re sort of measured up for one or recast it for one every few months because my stump was changing shape that's not something i have to worry about i can just kind of go about my business because it's all taken care of with this and the leg goes on and off in about five seconds it's very very easy <laughs> it's very good um and i'm hoping that it'll allow me to be lead the active life that i want to lead so i guess that would be my advice i've got no experience of being an amputee pre osseo but even when I was looking at the amputation, I was having to look into, do I want, you know, your traditional or do I want your osseo? And it became very clear to me very quickly that this was going to be the best option for me. And particularly as someone who had CRPS, you do not want with the friction that you can get between the liners and the sockets. I said, I can't risk that because that's too much of a risk for me for re-triggering CRPS. So I said, that's pretty much the only way I would like to go with this. I do not want that back. Thank you. Emily, last question I'd like to ask you. If you could share a message directly with Professor Almaderas right now, what would you like to say to him? Oh, a lot of stuff. I know we talked about this pre-theater and I was too nervous to really give you a proper answer. Um, but I am so incredibly grateful every single day. Like I said, even before the leg, there are all of these things that I can do that I was not able to previously do. I'm up on my crutches. Now I'm up on my leg and I'm walking pain-free for the first time in five, six years, potentially. And I don't have to worry about anything disintegrating because it's so good. I've got no worries about this whatsoever. Whereas previously coming out of surgeries, I'd have concerns about what would happen with the degeneration. So I'm just so grateful that he has been able to give me my life back. Um, I'm gonna be able to go and pursue my academic career that I would like to pursue. Um, I'm gonna be able to get back to all my sports. I don't even know how you express enough gratitude for what that has meant for me. Just, I can't really even put that into words, to be honest. It's just amazing what he's been able to do with this. Um, you know, particularly with CRPS, nobody else will really touch us as a surgical candidate or a surgical patient, but he said, no, nope, there's something we can do to help. And it just felt so good to just be validated on the day and then for him to agree to it again, such immense, immense gratitude. And there won't be a day that goes past that I will not think about that and everything that it's given back to me. I don't think you could really understand unless you've been there, but you can, everyone else can see the difference. So I'm sure everyone in my life would 
like to express their gratitude as well. It's not just me that's grateful for me, it's everybody else around me that can see the change. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time today, Emily, really, and can't wait to see you smash your next marathon. Okay.